Hey guys, in one of my recent videos, I showed this screen, which is my portainer setup that shows all of the different containers that I've got running at any given time. And somebody was very observant and noticed that I have our desktop running and they asked me to make a video on it. So let's go ahead and do that. But first, let me explain what our desktop is. Uh, it's actually a fairly simple explanation. It is adding a desktop to your home server. So you can have a desktop environment uh, on that server to do things uh, through the desktop versus doing an SSH thing or something like that. So if you really want a, a remote desktop or a Linux uh, desktop on your home server, uh, let's take a look at how to do that in this video. Okay, so the first thing I actually need to do before I can do any of that uh, is, is remove our desktop from here and show you how to install it. Luckily, I don't have anything important on there. I just got it up and running the other day and I just wanted to uh, do some testing, but I've got it working. So uh, let's start from scratch. I'm going to go ahead and remove our desktop uh, from my setup here, and then we'll go through the process of using Stacks to reinstall it. Okay, so uh, everything's been removed from uh, my server as far as our desktop is concerned. Uh, however, I did leave this stack in here um, and that's just because it's working and I don't wanna mess with it again. So what we'll do is we'll take a look here. Uh, you can see that nothing in here is running. However, we've got this in our stacks editor, but first we're gonna come over here to hub.docker.com. Uh, we're gonna take a, a look at Linux servers version of our desktop because that's the version I'm using. Uh, there are other versions out there that you could probably use, but I'm a big fan of Linux servers. So uh, we're gonna go that route for this video. So let's scroll down here a bit. Uh, until we get down to our Docker Compose option here. Um, and so let's, let me open something up in a different window so I don't sound like an idiot any more than normal. There we go. Okay, so let's take a look at this Docker Compose file here. So, uh, or this schema rather. So obviously uh, we've got our version two up here. We've got our services is gonna be our desktop. The image that we're gonna use, like I said, is Linux server slash our desktop. We're gonna name it our desktop. Privileged is true in this case. Uh, you can turn that on or off. Uh, I think there might even be an explanation down here. There's not. Um, it's probably safe to leave it privileged. Uh, oops, there we go. Um, but if you don't want to, you can definitely set that to false. Uh, I think it's false by default, so you could even just take that line out entirely. Um, as far as our environment, we're gonna have three things that we're gonna have to edit here most likely. Uh, that's gonna be our user ID, our group ID, and our time zone. Now, if we go over to my, my Portainer instance here, you can see that my username up here in the top right corner is admin. So uh, what we're gonna do in order to get our UID and our GID or user and group uh, is we'll open up Putty and we'll drag that up there just like so. And then we're gonna log into my server like so. I don't like it right there. Let's move it over there. All right, so I'm gonna log in as root and I'm gonna type in my root password. Hopefully that's right, there we go. Okay, now again, like I said, my user name here is admin. So that's what we're gonna take a look at. Um, oops, come on, there you go. We're gonna say uh, uh, ID space uh, admin. Oh, if I could type like so. And here you can see my UID is 998 and my group ID or GID is 100. We're gonna to wanna to keep that in mind here. Okay, so below that we've got volumes here. So uh, the first one we're just gonna leave alone. Uh, that one is so that it can work with the hardware. Um, the next one is our path to data. This is where our configuration file is gonna go. We're gonna edit this one. Uh, below that, we've got ports, port 3389. Uh, that is remote desktop port, leave that alone. Uh, you could change that, I suppose, uh, on the external port, uh, but make sure that you leave it available on the internal port as 3389. Now below that, we've got something that we've never run across before uh, if you've been watching my videos, and that is SMH size one GB. Again, that one is optional, but uh, you may, may wanna actually use or leave that one in there. So. Um, the SMH size parameter, and I'm reading this uh, from Amazon's AWS, about AWS page here. Uh, the SMH parameter allows you to specify the shared memory that a container can use. It enables memory intensive containers to run faster by giving more access to a, a, a allocated memory. Um, so uh, the bigger you can make it this number, uh, the better. Of course, don't, don't be ridiculous here. If you've only got eight gigs on your server, don't try to give it 16. Uh, keep it with maybe two or maybe even four if you really wanted to push it. Um, but just understand that, that you do this and it actually says down here, this SMH size, we set this to one gig to prevent modern web browsers from crashing. Um, I will say that I have changed that one a little bit and I'll show you that here in just a second. And then restart less stopped. That one's pretty standard. So 
Now, let's actually, let's put these next to each other so you can see what I'm doing here. Um, basically, I didn't change anything until we get down to the environment. And again, I changed my user ID and my group ID according to uh, what this said when I told it to find me the ID for my admin user. So I changed it to 998 and 100. Uh, again, below that was America slash Denver for me, for my time zone. That's the time zone I'm in. Um, you may want to change that to wherever you are. Um, just know that I did change those three variables uh, from what was showing here to what I needed that was specific to my setup here. Uh, below that, again, we didn't mess with this first line, even though it's optional, we didn't mess with it, we left it alone. And then below that, we've got uh, where our uh, configuration uh, files are gonna go. Now, uh, I actually didn't, uh, didn't think that through, I should have had that open already, but uh, I will show you what's going on there. So, uh, in order to set up this configuration folder here, um, I actually created a shared folder uh, right here. You can see in shared folders is config. And then uh, I've got an absolute path here. This is what I used was this absolute path. If you don't see absolute path, uh, hover over any of these header lines up here, click the drop down, go to columns and toggle absolute path on. Uh, so here we've got um, SRV dev disk uh, by label files slash config. And that's what I've got here, except that I put our desktop in its own subfolder. Um, so that is all I changed there. Again, I left uh, port 3389. That one, again, it's standard. It's a remote desktop port that we're all familiar with, if you're familiar with remote desktop. So I didn't bother changing that. Now I did change this SMH size from one gigabyte to two gigabytes. Uh, that's all I changed there. Um, and then the restart unless stopped, I didn't change that because I don't need to. Uh, so what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and click on update the stack or deploy the stack. Uh, obviously this will be your first time running it. Uh, so you'll click the blue button, uh, whatever it happens to say, go ahead and click that and give it a minute to load and do its thing in the background. And then once it's done, we'll jump in. Okay, so after a little bit of a wait there, uh, our desktop is up and running. Let's take a look at the logs. Uh, just to make sure everything here looks good. There's no errors, uh, nothing is still pending. So this all looks really good. So in order to connect to this, uh, what we'll do is we're gonna click on our Windows button right there. I'm gonna just type in remote. Of course, uh, it opened it in down there, whatever. So here is the Windows remote desktop connection uh, software. Uh, this is installed by default with Windows. This Windows comes with this. Don't have to do anything other than open it. So uh, this is the IP address to my server on my local network. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on connect. Uh, this, uh, this is fine. Uh, I'm actually gonna say, don't ask me again, because otherwise it will ask you every time you wanna connect. I'm gonna go ahead and say, yes, that's fine. So now your username is ABC and your password is ABC. And then you should be able to uh, click enter or click okay, or however you wanna get there. But here we are on our uh, remote desktop for Windows. Now we actually have, or sorry, for, for our home server, not Windows, geez. So this is actually a desktop environment running on our home server. So what's cool about this is it makes things a little bit easier in some regards. So for instance, I can actually, instead of typing in, you know, one nine, oh geez, oh. Uh, you know, like one nine two, oops, wow. Yeah, that was right, 192.168.1. Whatever you can actually just type in localhost um, and and then say like port 5000. Oh, you know what? That actually didn't work. So uh, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna close that. Holy cow! I can't believe I didn't even think about that. Here we can see that it is doing stuff in the background, so that's good. Uh, what I am gonna do though is I'm gonna come back to my containers. I'm gonna go to our desktop. I'm gonna click on duplicate and edit. Um, and then I'm gonna go over here to network and I'm gonna switch that to host. And then I'll click on deploy the container. Uh, you could probably just add a network to your uh, stack there, um, but I didn't, so we're gonna do it this way. Now again, I'm gonna click on logs. Uh, everything there looks good. Connect, again, ABC, ABC, oops, C, there we go. Give this a second to load. Now let's give that a go. <clears throat> we'll type in, uh, oops, localhost 5000. Hey, look at that. Now, uh, now we're, uh, we're actually attached to our host network. Uh, now we can go to um, all, oops, of course that's not gonna work. It doesn't use namespaces the way Windows does there. Um, but I could do, you know, uh, localhost and then uh, 19.9, whoa, that's right. For some reason, 
uh, n n uh, that my the numpad on my keyboard does not work uh, here. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna say one nine 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 nine. And this is uh, net data. You, if you, you may have actually seen me uh, deploy this on my server in a previous video. Uh, this is what my server is doing presently with uh, swap reads, uh, disk reads, disk writes, uh, swap used, CPU usage. Uh, all of that is in there. If I wanted to do this, I could. I could do like three. Th oops, three thousand. And here I've got another project that I just did a video on recently uh, that shows my network uh, upload and download speeds over the course of the last uh, six hours. I can change that, of course, uh, to let's say two days. And we can see that Comcast or Xfinity is having a real hard time right now. So I think that pretty much covers everything. Of course, if you wanted to, uh, you could do something like sudo apt update. This is probably a good idea to do. Um, now that we know that everything is working the way we expect it to. Um, so now it's saying there's 144 packages that can be updated. Uh, so we're going to change upgrade or update to upgrade like so. And then we'll just go ahead and say yes here. And then we can just go ahead and let this run. And then once it's done, probably do a reboot on this container uh, by just going up here to the top um, and uh, doing a... Uh, well, uh, maybe not a shutdown or suspend, but a log out and then go back to your portainer and do a reboot that way, maybe. Okay, guys, so there you go. There is how to set up our desktop on your home server so you can have uh, a Linux uh, desktop available on your server for whatever needs you may have. Just remember to set that SMH size to at least one gigabyte. Uh, otherwise, browsers and things like that may not work as well as you would want them to do. So I think that pretty much wraps up everything uh, regarding our desktop. But uh, before I go into my usual end of the video kind of spiel, um, I wanna give a, a special shout out to four people. Now, the reason I wanna give a shout out to these four people, and I'm gonna give their names in just a second, uh, they have uh, found my videos helpful enough to become patrons and support me on a monthly basis. And I really, really do appreciate that. So uh, if you can, it would be amazing if you could become a patron. Uh, there's a, a few different tiers available. The $5 tier will give you access to a, a patrons only Discord server where we can hang out and chat about just whatever you wanna chat about, ask questions, whatever, basically anything goes. Um, but I wanna give a special shout out to Dan Norton Norwood, David Owen, um, Joseph, um, I know I'm going to butcher this, uh, Polchlepec, Joseph Polchlepec, I, I know I butchered that and I apologize. Uh, also, Paul Hart, thank you all for being patrons at whatever level you're a patron at. I really do appreciate it. So uh, if anybody else is interested in becoming a patron and helping me out uh, on a monthly basis, uh, there will be a, a Patreon link in the description down below that you can check out. And uh, whatever you can do, uh, whatever you can afford to do and whatever you feel comfortable doing would mean the world to me and help me out a bunch. So uh, again, Patreon links in the description down below. There is also a, a coffee link down there if you want to do like a one-time tip that would be amazing as well so um, now I can get into the spiel at the end. If you found the video helpful, uh, do me a favor and give the video a thumbs up. Would help me out a bunch. Would help the channel out a bunch and maybe get this video out to more people. Uh, if you're interested in these kinds of videos where I'm doing home server stuff, showing how to deploy different containers and that sort of thing, uh, definitely get subscribed. I've got more of these videos coming out. Actually, in large part, thanks to you guys again for uh, for suggesting new things to do videos about. Uh, I really do appreciate your guys' input on the content that I'm putting on this channel. Uh, we're growing a community here and I really do appreciate that. Um, so if you're interested in these kinds of videos, definitely get subscribed so you can know uh, when my new videos come out. Um, but I think with all of that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support. And I'll talk to you in the next video.